Adam Tucker. Really this. Well, old Danny Webb. And they are here. This is Haley. This is the man you know. Alex, thanks to Haley. Yeah. You're getting something to drink. Drink up. Good. What if I tell you you're tired? Could you yawn? Could you stretch? Could you pretend you're sleeping? Could you snore? Okay, wake up. Good. All right. If you don't know something, I'm going to ask you to shrug your shoulders. Let me see you do that. Get thinking about something. Scratch your head like you're thinking. Okay. You just solved the problem. You have a great idea. Okay. Let's say you have to order people around. Let me hear you clap two times. Good. If I tell you to breathe a sigh of relief, let me hear you go. Good. If you're supposed to be talking to someone, let me see you pretend talk. Move your neck like you talk. Good. If you're angry, point your finger and look like you're yelling at somebody. Good. If I tell you to beg, let me see you look like you would. Please, please. Good. All right. Let me see what else you might have to do. Oh, let me see you stomp on the floor three times. One, two, three. Good. Let me see you row a bow. Row. Good. Let me see you get dressed. Put your clothes on. Put your shoes on. Good. Okay. Watch me. Some of the boys are going to have to bow down in the story. Watch me, men. You're going to bow down. Don't forget to come up. Girls, some of you will be wearing dresses. You already have dresses. You'll curtsy. If I tell you to get on your horses and ride, you'll get on your horses. You'll be galloping all over the place on your horses. If I tell you, girls and boys even, to dance around a little bit, you'll dance around. Anything you hear me tell you to do, you'll do. It's that easy. You just need to be this quiet so you can hear what I'm saying. Mind about that. I guess you could take off your crown, right? Or stick the helmet on. You like that idea? Okay. Can I interest you in a cool looking mustache? No? You could wash it off later if you want. You don't have to. Okay. And um, let me see. I think we'll give you a regular sword to start with. But then in the story, when you fix up the magician's ankle, you get this special sword that becomes magic. Is that okay with you? Good. Hold, hold, hang on to this. Let me find my mirror so you can see what you look like. Turn around. Let's give the king a hand. Okay. Yay! Yay. All right. <laughs> Once upon a time, long, long ago, there lived a king and queen. They had three lovely daughters, the princesses. The princesses all shared a big bedroom at the top of the stairs in the palace where they lived. Every day, the princesses got dressed, get dressed girls in their fancy clothes. They put on their fancy shoes, put your shoes on. And when they were ready, they ran down the stairs, come to the throne room where the king and queen were waiting. The princesses curtsied to the king and queen. Curtsy girls. They said, good morning, mother, good morning, father. That morning, you guys got to stand up. The king and queen, no, I need to do it. You're supposed to be taller. The king and queen looked down at the princess's feet, and much to their surprise, look surprised for us, they saw holes in the princess's brand new shoes. The king and queen asked the princesses, how did you girls get holes in your shoes? The princesses just shrugged their shoulders, shook their heads, and said, we don't know. They knew what they weren't telling. The king and queen weren't worried about it, so they gave their daughters brand new shoes. Give the girls the shoes. Come on. The princesses put the shoes on their feet and ran back upstairs to their bedroom. Go. Nighttime came. The king and queen looked at each other. They said, maybe the princesses are sneaking out while we sleep. Let's go lock them in their bedroom. The king and queen ran up the stairs and locked the princesses in the bedroom and went back down to wake. The next morning came. The princesses woke up. They got dressed in their fancy clothes. They put on their brand new shoes from yesterday. They ran down down the stairs to the throne room. Go, go, go. They curtsied to the king and queen and said, good morning, mother and father. The king and queen looked down at the princess's feet and once again saw holes in their brand new shoes. The king and queen asked the girls, what's going on? How do you keep getting those holes in your shoes? But the princesses just shrugged their shoulders, shook their heads, and said they didn't know. So once again, the king and queen gave the girls brand new shoes to wear. The princesses put them on their feet and ran back stairs to their bedroom. But the same thing kept happening day after day after day until they were running out of shoes in the kingdom. The king and queen needed help in finding out how this was happening. So the king and queen made a royal proclamation. Hear ye, hear ye, hear ye, said the king and queen. Whoever can find out how our daughters keep getting holes in their shoes can get a million dollar reward. Pretty soon, two handsome knights in shining armor got on their horses, swords held high up in the air. Go! They came galloping around and around, keep going, showing off their riding skills. Oh, they were very handsome. 
handsome. The princesses put their hands to their hearts. Look at those handsome knights, they thought. Finally, the knights stopped riding. They got off their horses. They stood in front of the king and queen. Over there, guys. They bowed down to the king and queen. Bow down. And they said, Your Majesties, we are here to find out how your daughters keep getting holes in their shoes so we can get the million dollar reward. Please call for the princesses. The king and queen clapped two times. Princesses, come downstairs, they said. The princesses came down the stairs. Run. They curtsied to the knights. The knights bowed down to the princesses. Bow down. They said, girls, help us out. We want to find out how you can get those holes in your shoes so we can get the million dollar reward. Show us where it's happening. The princesses said, come on upstairs. We'll show you. They had a plan. The princesses and the knights went up the stairs. Go, go, go. When they got to the top of the stairs, the princesses gave the knights a special drink to drink. Give the boys a drink. The knights drank up the drink. The big door closed. And the knights mysteriously disappeared. Back to your spot. Well, the mystery was still unsolved. The princesses kept getting holes in their shoes, the knights had disappeared, and no one knew how it was happening. In the meantime, far away in the woods, there lived a king named Russell. He had been out looking for his army that had gotten lost in the Great War. He needed money, too, to raise a new army to fight the bad guys. Well, Russell had heard about the million dollar reward, and he wanted to try to get it. So he packed up some clothes and an old rag he found, and he put them over his shoulder. He took a jug of water and put it in one pocket, and a crust of stale bread in his other pocket. Then he slowly began to walk through the woods. He walked and he walked until he came across a 2,000-year-old magician who had twisted his ankle. The magician was moaning and groaning in pain. Oh, my ankle's killing me. Oh, you look like a kind king. Please help me, sir. Well, Russell was a kind man. He got down on his knees. He wrapped up the magician's ankle in a bandage. Then he stood up. He said to the old man, well, you look hungry and thirsty, old wizard. I'm a king, but I've been in the woods for a while, and all I have now, my chest, is bread and water. Russell gave the bread to the magician, and he ate it up hungrily. Russell gave him the water to drink. The magician drank it all up. When he finished, the magician said to the king, you know, you're a good man for helping me, your majesty. I don't have money, but I do have something you will need to help you solve the mystery and get the money you need. First of all, put down your sword. I'm going to give you a magic sword. You'll need this sword to defend yourself against the wicked witch of the woods. Secondly, take this helmet. It's a magic helmet. Don't put it on just yet. Carry it with you. When you need it, it will make you invisible, and only animals will be able to see you, no people. Speaking of animals, the magician clapped his hands two times. Animals, stand up. Come out of the woods. Come meet Russell. The king, you are to go with him and keep him company, said the magician. Be his friends, his companions. The magician and the king wave goodbye to each other. Good luck, said the magician. Well, the king said to his animal friends, let's go, we've got a long way to go till we get to the palace, follow me. They followed the king through the woods. They walked and they walked. Suddenly the wicked witch and maybe warlock came flying out of the woods. They flew over to the king. Okay, the witch pointed her magic wand at the king. She said, you are trespassing in my woods. The penalty for trespassing is death. I'm going to cook you up for dinner. That's what I'm going to do. Oh, yeah, said King Russell. He was the one with the magic sword. He pointed the sword at the Wicked Witch. When she saw that sword pointing at her, she got down on her knees. She begged him, oh, please, please spare my life, your majesty. I promise to be a good witch if you let me live. Please let me live. Well, the king scratched his head and thought about it. He said, you know, you kind of remind me of my mother. I think I'd rather let you live. The witch stood up and breathed a sigh of relief. Oh, thank you. She went over to the king and said, do not fear me, your majesty, but take my advice. When you get to the palace, watch out for a princess named Bree. She's going to try to trick you by giving you a funny drink to drink. If you drink it, you'll disappear like the knights. Don't drink it. Pour it over your shoulder when no one is looking and pretend to go to sleep. Trust me, that will spare your life. The king shook his head. Yes, I understand. Thank you. And the witch flew back into the woods. She was a good witch now. King Russell pointed and said, look, there's the palace. Hurry, hurry, animals, it's almost nightfall. This way. When they finally got there, it was a good thing. The king and queen were in terrible shape. They were practically pulling their hair out of their heads from frustration. What's going on in our kingdom, they wondered. King Russell bowed down to the king and queen. He said, how do you do, your majesties? I am King Russell from far away, but I am here to find out how your daughters keep getting holes in their shoes. My animals and I have traveled a long distance. Please call for the princesses. The king and queen clapped two times. Daughters, come downstairs, they said. And the girls did. When they saw King Russell, they curtsied to him. 
King Russell bowed down to the princesses. Bow down. He said, girls, help me out. I am King Russell. My animal friends and I have come a long way. We want to find out how you keep getting those holes in your shoes. I hope to get the million dollar reward. Help me out, won't you? Where's it happening? The princesses said, come on upstairs. The animals can come too. And they all went up the stairs. Go. When I got to the top of the stairs, just as the witch had warned, Princess Bree went over to Russell. She said, you look thirsty, your majesty. Here, have one of our fine drinks. But Russell remembered what the witch said. He poured the drink over his shoulder when no one was looking. Then he yawned. He said, oh, am I tired? I've had a long trip. I think my animal friends and I had better go take a nap. The animals come this way, guys, scooted into the corner of the bedroom. All the way here, and they lay down on the floor. So did King Russell, right here. He, he pretended to be sleeping. He began snoring loudly. Princess Melanie ran over to see if he was really asleep. Go see, go see. It certainly looked like it. Melanie went back to her sister's. She said, girls, the coast is clear. The woodsmen sound asleep. Now we can get ready. The princesses opened up their closets. They took out their fancy dresses. They put on their fancy shoes. They put on their belts. They put on their necklaces, their makeup. They fixed their hair, and they put on their veils. Then they admired themselves in the mirror. When they were all ready, Princess Haley stepped into the middle of the bedroom floor. She said to her sisters, line up in back of me, girls. I'll lead the way. The princesses lined up in back of each other. When they were all lined up and ready, Princess Haley stomped on the bedroom floor three times. One, two, three, a secret trap door. Trap door opened up right in the middle of the bedroom floor, revealing that hidden staircase that led down somewhere. Follow Haley. The princesses ran down the stairs. Run, 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 come, come, come. When they got to the bottom of the stairs, they found themselves in a mysterious underground world. Follow me. First, the princesses ran through a forest where all the leaves were silver. Then they ran through another forest where all the leaves were gold. Finally, they stopped right here by the shores of the lake, and there were the knights who had disappeared. The knights were standing in front of rowboats, waiting for the princesses. The knights said to the princesses, come on, girls, get into the rowboats. Come, girls, come. And they did. In the meantime, back in the bedroom, King Russell was ready. He jumped up. Wake up, wake up, animals, he said. The princesses are sneaking out. They better not see me. I'm going to become invisible. He put on his magic helmet. Only the animals could see him now. He said, we'll do what the princesses did. We'll follow them. Line up in back of me. The animals lined up in back of the king. When they were all lined up, the king stomped on the bedroom floor three times. One, two, three. The trap door opened up. They ran down the stairs. Come this way. They ran through the forest of silver leaves. Run. They ran through the forest of golden leaves. They, too, came to the shores of the lake. When they got there, they stopped. The invisible king jumped into the nearest rowboat. No one could see him since he was invisible. But the princesses could all see the animals. The princesses turned around, pointed their fingers, and scolded the animals. They said, you can't come, animals. This is a secret journey. You go back to the bedroom. We'll see you in the morning. They ran through the forest of silver and golden leaves, back to the bedroom. They sat down to wait for their master Russell to return. Now the journey would begin. Come. They rowed the boats. Come to me across to the other side of the lake. They climbed out of the boats. They entered a beautiful palace. And they began to dance sounds of some beautiful waltz music. Come on, girls, let's go. They dance, come on, and they dance for hours and hours and hours. King Russell scratched his head. He said, how long is this dancing going to go on for in the middle of the night? Finally, after about five hours of dancing, Princess Melanie stopped. She looked down at her feet. She shook her head. Oh, no, I've been dancing so long I've worn holes in my shoes. She turned to her sisters. They looked down at their feet. They shook their heads. Yes, we also have holes in our shoes. Melanie said that it's time that we get the knights take us to take us back to our own palace before morning. Let's go. Everyone went back down to the shores of the lake. They climbed into the boats. They rowed their boats back across to their own side of the lake. When they got there, the invisible king jumped out of the rowboat all by himself. King Russell ran through the forest of silver leaves. Keep running. He ran through the forest of golden leaves. He ran up the stairs to the princess's bedroom. He took off his magic helmet so now he could be seen again. He lay down on the floor and pretended to be sleeping. Looked like he had never gone anywhere at all. The princesses and knights waved goodbye to each other. Turn around, girls. Wave goodbye to the knights. Bye. We'll dance again tomorrow. Can't wait, said the knights. Princess Bree said to her sisters, I'll lead the way back. Girls, follow me. They lined up in back of each other. When they were all lined up, they ran through the forest. Run, of silver leaves. They ran through the forest of golden leaves. Run, 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 follow Bree. They ran stairs over here to see if King Russell was still there. He was. Oh, the princesses breathed a sigh of relief. <gasps> Thank goodness, they said. Our secret's still safe. But King Russell jumped up. He turned to the princesses. He shook his head. No, no, girls. Your secret's not safe. I was invisible. I followed you. And I'm going to tell the king and queen what you've been doing every
every night. The princesses began to cry. Come on and cry. They got down on their knees. They begged him. Oh, please, please don't tell on us. We'll be punished for sneaking out. But King Russell shook his head. No, girls. Begging will get you nowhere. Come with me. I want to get the million dollars for solving this mystery once and for all. The king and the princesses stand up, went downstairs to the throne room where the king and queen were waiting. When they got there, King Russell bowed down to the king and queen. He said, your majesties, I've solved this mystery once and for all. It seems every night your daughters sneak out. They go dancing all night long in a mysterious underground world. They dance until they can't dance anymore because they've worn holes in their shoes. Not only that, he explained, they've been dancing with the knights who disappeared. At that very moment, the knights suddenly appeared here in the throne room. Once the secret was revealed, these knights were now free men. Well, the king and queen shook hands with King Russell. Congratulations, your majesty. Well, you solved this mystery. Here's your million dollars. You earned it. Thank you, said the king. I'm so happy I needed that money to raise a new army. Then the king and queen pointed their fingers at their daughters and scolded them and said, Girls, you shouldn't have snuck out. You should have just told us how much you like to dance. From this day forth, you girls will be known as the dancing princesses starting today at Russell's birthday party. We're all going to celebrate. Everybody stand up for this. Stand up. Come into the grand ballroom, everybody, right here. Let's dance. Come on. Let's party. Come on. Here he is.